So next, let's take a look at the auth pages and the app pages. So the auth pages are going to control um, registration and login, which gives you access to the app, and then the app itself, um, which will basically uh, control the dashboard. So if we take a look at this first um, auth page, we have a um, you know the, the header and footer, uh, just like we had on the website. We've got a section here that has a header for um, creating your account, a heading, I should say. Um, and then we have a section here that has the actual form. So we've got an image uploader. This is a um, default element type in Builder that lets the user uh, select an image from their computer to upload for their profile picture. And then we've got three input fields for name, address, e email address, and password. And we've got a uh, button for submitting the form. On the left-hand side here in the elements tree, if I click on uh, these different field input fields, I can see that they've got uh, events attached to them. So I wanna see what those are. So I've selected the name input field. And on the right-hand side here under events, I can see that we have an event on key up. So this is a key binding that says when you release a key on your keyboard, so that would be after you press a key, um, then it runs an action. And in this case, um, we're running a flow that uh, is validate step one email address. So I'm gonna click this arrow here next to this so we can go to the flow and see exactly what this includes. So what this is is basically our form validation flow. So anytime um, the key is uh, uh, let up after being pressed, um, we want to run a validation step. And basically what we're doing is validating that the name and the email address um, are there and are valid. So the first step is um, validating the email. This is a action type that uh, comes with Builder called validate email address. So we can see that we're validating the um, current page element named email address and the value that's input into that field. And if that's valid, it's gonna return true. And if it returns true, then we'll move on to step two, which is validating the password. If it returns false and the email address is not um, valid, then we have another action called sign up disable. So let's take a look at, let's take a look at that one first. Um, so if it's not true, we run this flow sign up disabled. And in here, um, we basically are disabling the um, button um, that is this create account button. So we're adding a, in order to do that, we're adding a style class um, to this create account button that is called disabled. And that makes it look how you see it now. It's, it's um, sort of uh, faint and it's not clickable. That's due to this style class that uh, gets added when the email is not valid. Um, after that, it will also set a disabled property on the button to true. So that's basically what this flow does is just disables that button. If we go back uh, to this element, um, okay, so validate email address. We were looking at uh, if true, it will move to step two, which is validate password. So I'm gonna click on that and look at this flow. It just has one action, which is to compare two values. And what this is doing is it's comparing the um, value of the password field. So whatever's been entered here in the password to an empty value, basically checking to see if the password is, if the password field is empty. Um, if the password field is empty, um, I'm sorry, it's comparing it to say, is it not equal to empty? So basically we're checking here to see if there is a value filled in the password field. If it is field, filled, we'll move on to step three, which is validating the name. Um, and if it's not filled, if it's empty, then we move to um, disable, which is the flow we were just looking at. 
So you can see kind of how this process works. We're alternating between, um, you know, checking to see if it's valid. If it is, we move forward. If it's not, we disable the, the field. So let's continue down the, the tree here. So on, um, you know, if the password does exist and it's not empty, then we'll move to step three, which is validating the name. And on this flow, we can see we're comparing the name uh, to make sure it doesn't equal an empty value. Um, if it does equal the empty value, we'll disable again. And if it doesn't equal an empty value, then we will enable the sign up button. So that'll just basically do the reverse of this disable step. Um, we're going to remove that style class that disables the button. And um, we're going to remove the attribute that makes this disabled. And now that button can be clicked. Now this button, create account, um, we'll see that it starts off here as disabled in the view. But again, when we key up after we um, you know, are entering this uh, field values, if we have entered all three um, properly, then this button will become, uh, become enabled. Um, so here on the flows for this page, we can see there's quite a bit, um, quite a few flows. Um, some of these are default, uh, meaning they already exist in a new page, like page load and page binding. And some of these come with the template. So again, when you're working with a new template, I recommend clicking through these and getting a good understanding for um, what the different actions are and how they're used. Um, all right, so if we go back to our elements view, um, we see that this already have an account um, sign in uh, text field has an action on it as well. And basically, if you click on that, it's going to run this action, external sign in. So if we look at external sign in, we see that this is gonna run a flow on the header page that does the sign in step. So just like the um, home page, we're just running an action on that header page that uh, will start the sign in action. So lastly, on this sign up enable step, um, after we remove the disabled class and we uh, remove the disabled attribute, we have this third action here that sets the it, its element set interaction. So basically what we're doing is on this element, which is our create account button, we are setting the event code for on click to be this action, which is called action sign up. And if I select this, I can see that we have an HTTP action for user sign up with password. Again, this is a default action in Builder that we can use to create new users. Um, this is set already to the collection for users. Um, this is your data collection in Builder where users are stored. And it's got it's set to um, users by default. And then we can see our field mappings here. So we have a login ID, um, which brings the value from the email address. So that'll be their login ID. Password uses the value from the password field. Um, the name field uses the value from the name field. And the profile picture uses the value from the image uploader. Now, um, there are various actions here for on success, user already exists, or something went wrong. Um, and we have actions already bound to these um, scenarios that come with the template. So um, on success, it actually signs the user in. Uh, if the user already exists, it's going to give them a message that says it already exists and the same if something went wrong. Um, there's a new user ID variable name that's already set to new user, new user ID. So we know that this variable will be available for us to use um, after they are signed up. And then the target page for that variable is just the current page. So you see how this works. You can just continue to click through each of these actions to see what each one does. If you want to see what the action sign in does, 
you can click on that. This will actually sign them in with their password. Um, and it's using the email address and password that have been input already. And then we have, again, various um, success scenarios. Something went wrong. User password must be reset. Users on the waiting list. Users locked out or invalid username or password. So you can see how valuable already this template is. Um, just in the auth page here for sign up, there's a lot that's already wired out of the box, makes it super easy to get set up and, and going. In the first video, um, I showed you how quick it was to just um, sign in and um, you know create an account as well. That's, this is why it's so easy to do that out of the box because all of this already comes wired up. And it's a great way to learn how this stuff works in Builder. It's a great way to learn how to create users um, because this is already all connected. So you can just come in and sort of reverse engineer this. So that's the sign up page. The sign in page below it um, is pretty similar. In terms of the structure, we've got a heading that says sign into your account. And then we have email address and password fields. And the same goes for this page. If you click on the email address um, field, you can see that it's got an action tied to it. It validates the email address as the first step. And if the email's valid, it'll uh, move on to the password. If we look at the validate password, it's just making sure that the, it's not empty. And if it's not, then it's going to enable the sign in button. Otherwise, it disables that sign in button. If we look at how it enables the sign in button, we see again it's removing a disabled class and a disabled attribute. And now it's setting the on click to this action called sign in. We can look at that action and we see all of this is very similar to how the registration is set up. Um, it's running a sign in action with the email and password that have been entered into these fields. And we have all these different actions for the various scenarios. So um, I encourage you to, to go through each of these, click through them and see how each of these are set up. But this is a, a kind of an overview of how those, um, how those are set up. Um, once the user is off and we know that they are signed in, we can then move on to um, the application page. So if we look at this sign in success action, we'll see that um, what it does is it runs an action on the header page that is action open app. And if we drill into that one, we'll see that what it does is it sets um, it's using the action open page into browser tab. And it's saying basically the current tab in your browser, reroute them to slash app. If you remember from um, one of the earlier videos, if you look at your URL page routes, you'll see that there's a route for slash app and that is pointed to the app page. And so that's what we're seeing here is it's gonna route them to slash app, which will uh, take them to this app page and we'll cover that in the next video.